got to that extent yet, but if it was a road rage and he used that vehicle against those police officers, that can be considered an assault with a deadly weapon. But uh, he is continuing. But look at the speeds there, just incredibly fast. Probably, I can't use Skymap because we're really shallow right now. We'll use it when we get back over. But I'm guessing 80, 90 miles an hour here. He's continues southbound on that 110 freeway, really picking up that speed. And, of course, uh, we've got hit and run. We saw a couple of vehicles that he hit on the 101 freeway as he was going uh, north, uh, southbound on the 101, sideswiped at least two vehicles. So he's a hit and run misdemeanor suspect right now. Now, if he injured any of those people, and for some reason one person in those cars had a neck ache or anything like that, well, that turns into a felony. So the wants on the wants are really piling up against this suspect as it continues about 100 miles an hour here on the southbound Harbor Freeway. We're doing our best to get around and pick this up back on the south end right around the 105 freeway. We'll keep you updated. But look at the speeds, really picking it up now as a CHP close behind, but not too close. You know, we'll do that right now, get that going again, get the speeds. And there's your speeds, looking at about 90 plus miles per hour, much faster than we saw before. Now pushing over 100 there. We're going to keep an eye on that Boy. speed if they continue southbound here on that 101 freeway. We are approaching the 91, uh, well, let me see here. Yeah, approaching the 91 here. And you can see, if you're following along, we are watching also with SkyMap 7. This is our new technology with ABC 7. You can follow along not only the speed at which that driver is going, but also in the lower left-hand corner, you can also see the streets and the uh, passes that he's uh, making his way down the highway. So right now, on the 110, <coughs> headed southbound, and it looks as though he's getting closer and in the direction of San Pedro. Eventually, he'll make it there. But I just want to remind them, if you do see this coming up behind you, use your blinkers. Make sure that you are um, looking around before you change lanes and do so safely to move out of the way. Now, uh, it looks like this uh, this pursuit has now moved from Carson into Wilmington, continuing on that southbound direction. Um, getting closer to, it looks like, Anaheim Street. If you are looking at our technology, this is SkyMap 7, you're seeing the speed at which this driver is going. This all started in San Gabriel, and the San Gabriel police were on this person. Uh, we're being told that it was possibly because of road rage that has now turned into a chase. CHP has now taken over this chase, and again, it looks like he's getting off the highway now. Or is he transitioning onto another freeway? No, he's getting off the highway. So how does this change things, Officer Lund? And you know, I'm sorry, uh, you guys cut out. If you can go again with that question. I was just going to say, how does this change things now that we're on surface streets, not on the freeway anymore, and uh, continuing this reckless driving? So obviously there's going to be a lot more factors we have to worry about, obviously the lights, intersections, as well as pedestrians. So if there's anyone listening that is a pedestrian in the area, please stay off the sidewalks, uh, move to a safe location. We really don't know what this driver is going to do. Okay. Officer Lund, thank you very much. That's CHP Officer Sierra Lund joining us now uh, to help us understand what CHP is thinking. Uh, we want to go back to JT Alpa if we can, because JT is up over this. And JT, you watch this person take off. Uh, the freeway, uh, harsh right turn, and then now can yep. you tell us where he is and uh, from your perspective, what's happening? Yeah, he's on westbound Anaheim Street in the Wilmington Harbor Park area here. He got off the freeway onto Figueroa, and then he made that westbound turn onto, onto Anaheim here as we move through the area. Coming up on, uh, we'll call it Gaffey right now. I think that's the intersection right there. It's Gaffey Sky Map 7 showing us that. Coming to a stop here, we'll see if he pushes these vehicles out of the way or kind of squeeze through there. That is something we've seen him do, and he's made that turn onto northbound Gaffey here. Uh, we believe, well, I mean, that might be Vermont. We're going to call that Vermont right now. So we're going to be northbound Vermont at speeds of 55 plus. We'll see how fast he gets here using SkyMap 7 technology. But uh, you can see that he is uh, driving pretty radically. Doesn't hesitate at all to get in between those vehicles. Looks like he's going to set up for a left-hand turn on Normandy or maybe a U-turn back. Uh, he's going to go westbound on Normandy here. Uh, and we'll see what he does next. You can see at least four California Highway Patrol uh, vehicles here as we come northbound on Normandy away from the area. Uh, for in pursuit right now, they're probably making notifications to both Torrance PD, LAPD, uh, Harbor Division, I'm sure is being notified. I don't see if there, yes, there is. There is a California Highway Patrol helicopter overhead right now. We see him down below as we continue north. We're gonna pull back out, just too dark to see through that tent. Well, sometimes it's difficult for them, especially with tinted windows like that, to know if there's one, two, multiple yeah. people in this vehicle. Uh, he's slowing down significantly, down to about 40 miles an hour, 48, 49 miles an hour. Is that because he's coming into traffic or just navigating a little pocket there? Yeah, I'm not sure what he's doing. He's coming up on that 91 interchange uh, where you can pick up the, that 91 uh, westbound. It looks like he is going to transition eastbound on that uh, 91 here. We're going to make, make the call on that as uh, 
We're going eastbound there. There you go. Just had to let my pilot know there. Uh, Jason doing an excellent job negotiating other traffic and getting us through this. But yeah, now we're going to be uh, we're going to be westbound. Correction, eastbound on the 91 here from the uh, Harbor Freeway, and we'll see what he does next. The uh, whole different area for him now. So not really sure if he thinks he's going to lose the California Highway Patrol. We know that's not going to happen. He can't outrun a helicopter or a or a radio. So uh, we'll continue on this and we'll see what happens here. Oh, wow. drastic change there. He's going to be getting off at Main Street. Uh, yeah, he tricked one guy. CHB, as you can see, three or four did not get tricked by that and that's going to put him out on uh, Albertoni Street which is near Maine and he's going to be going eastbound on Albertoni he might jump right oh, back on the freeway on trying to be tricky but that's not going to happen so uh, uh, they've seen a thing or two like this and <laughs> that's not going to happen so uh, they're, they're right with him and again he's not going to lose the helicopter or the radios but uh, trying to be tricky here as the speeds increase uh, as he continues here on this eastbound 91 coming through uh, coming up on Avalon well one of the things we were talking about is what kind of vehicle he wow did well, he just okay, run so into yes. a CHP right there, officer Phillip? in front of him? That's that's a whole different ball game right uh, now. Well, right there, he showed a propensity to go at that officer's vehicle and sideswipe that vehicle. Wow. That can be considered assault with a deadly weapon Against on a police, a police officer. officer. We all yes. saw that. That is not a good thing. And JT, we, we are now learning that, black uh, and white. yeah, this is a, a Nissan Rogue. want to thank uh, some of our team members here at ABC7 uh, who sent us this note here. Um, we're continuing our special coverage of this pursuit suspect who uh, started as a road rage incident is what it's reported as with San Gabriel Police Department. At the, in, in, at the outset, there was some sort of road rage incident against the San Gabriel PD is what we're told. Ellen Leva also is now here in studio with us as we continue our coverage here throughout the afternoon, waiting to find out what is actually going to happen here. This is on the 91 freeway, um, but this has been going on. We started about uh, 1132 is when the first uh, discussion of this began with CHP and San Gabriel police uh, following this. It has Colorado license plate on this uh, this rogue, but we do not know if the person is from Colorado or, or what. As JT mentioned earlier, uh, this could be just stolen plates that they put on this vehicle just to throw people off. Uh, but also we're brought, bringing in Bruce Thomas. Uh, Bruce has joined us any number of times. He's a law enforcement ex expert, 27 years in law enforcement with uh, the Sheriff's Department. And uh, Bruce, thanks for Thanks for joining us. But here's the question. We've, we've watched this guy. Now he's actually attacked a CHP officer, assaulted an officer, and the, the car is a deadly weapon, correct? That's correct. What you have is you have the San Gabriel incident, which is assault on a peace officer, a felony. And then now you have the incident with the CHP officer, an additional assault with a deadly weapon. And, uh, JT, what are you seeing? As, it looks to me like traffic is really starting to pick up for him. Yeah, there's a construction zone up here. We're, we're at Cherry right now. You can see that uh, he is he has crossed past the 605. We're in the area. He's getting into a little bit of traffic here. Wow. He was doing fine in that carpool lane, but he has since uh, moved out of that carpool lane. And you can see him uh, moving in and out of traffic right now. But, uh, yeah, we're looking ahead here. i got my eyes outside. It's moving a little bit now. It doesn't seem to stop. Maybe a little further up at Bellflower. It looks to be extremely slow. There's some S-turns in the 91 freeway. That's where it looks like it's extremely slow. But, but look at this. He's got a wide-open carpool lane ahead of him, and he just wants to slalom through this traffic and do this aggressive-type behavior. Very, very aggressive by the suspect. It doesn't seem... Uh, Again, we don't know. He possibly under the influence of some kind of narcotic, but uh, it just doesn't seem like he's uh, making the best choices here, especially trying to ram that CHP officer who clearly was in a clearly marked vehicle. So it's hard to it's hard denying that he knew that was a police officer. But now it's starting to get slow. He's kind of caught up behind that boxtail truck here, and he's going to get out to that right lane. And we'll see as he approaches Cherry Avenue, and uh, that's the Cherry Avenue off ramp that's going to be coming into view here. But you now back over to the left side here. So at the slower speeds and and uh, based on the aggressiveness of the suspect uh you may see a pit maneuver here if he gets into that situation here it depends on the chp it depends on the supervisor in this pursuit balancing what we talked about it earlier doing that balance tense balancing the need to get the suspect into custody and weighing the needs of the safety for the general public at large to make sure that he doesn't hurt anybody so again they don't know if he's a named suspect uh, they don't specifically know or that we've been told what the wants are other than and we're going to be getting off here paramount well thought we were he goes back. i think he's going to play that tricky thing again philip thought we were going to get off a of paramount 
Scott Boulevard here is, is going to be slowing him down. We'll see what he does when he gets there. JT, we're bringing in also Ellen Leva here, and uh, we're going to show some video too, Ellen. Yeah, we have some video, thank you very much, uh, of a side swipes earlier today. This is the problem with a, with a pursuit like this. You, it's a cringe factor. Mm -hmm. and this guy's definitely on because we've seen him side swipe several cars. This is from a little bit earlier on, and just watch as the white vehicle, he just uh, disregards people, just... Does it as if, as if he targeted him? Exactly. Wow. It does look like it, doesn't it? Very aggressive driver. We know that he's wanted for assault on a police officer, and now a second felony assault on a police officer. He rammed that to CHP car. So a very dangerous pursuit. Awful to see this. So now we're back live again as I... Uh, okay, th this is Bellflower, and again, m more traffic. Uh, Bruce Thomas joining us. Uh, we've seen... You, you got to see that side swipe there again, uh, Bruce, and... Uh, we're looking at this from Air 7 HD, and it, do you feel like we're missing it, or were we accurate in the fact that it did, did appear like he targeted him? He went across multiple lanes right at that SUV. Oh, definitely. He was definitely targeting that CHP vehicle. You see multiple police units, CHP units in the area. What they're going to do, they're going to flood this area with, with uh, patrol cars. So to send a message to this guy, you're not getting away. You are going to jail today. He certainly isn't going to get away, and we have the helicopter right on him, or right behind him, and we're watching him go at, uh, what speed is he going now? I can't see. Roughly 83 miles an hour. We've seen him up to 110 yeah. at times, and uh, now into Cerritos, and uh, JT Alpa is in Air 7 HD, and uh, the SkyMap 7 is really showing us what freeway is on, uh, which is the 91, and what speeds he's at, and uh, JT... It doesn't seem, he doesn't seem to be deterred by, oh. look at that. I mean, that oh is, my gosh. Oh and then now he may have lost control. Oh, oh, control. He's control. He's control. control. And uh, spun out, so he did his own pit maneuver here. Wow. This is the Norwalk Boulevard off ramp. Mm. You can see, we'll see if he tries to run or not. It didn't look like he hit anything, just lost control, went over the embankment here. He and has he tried see, multiple uh, times to, to yep. fool the officers behind him by doing some sort of dangerous move. And as you said, JT, he basically pitted so, himself. Uh, uh, because he caught that uneven nature of that uh, transition there, where he caught yep. that center divider a little bit and, and spun himself out. So now, as Bruce Thomas had told us just moments ago, uh, this is a, a, a felony pursuit end. So it is going to be a significant difference than if this person had just slowly pulled over. This is a high-risk felony stop at pursuit end. And, JT, I don't know if they know yet how many people are in that vehicle. Yeah, this is, uh, you can see that right see, rear passenger opening. door opening up there, guys. Uncertain if the, the, the suspect could not get out of the driver's door, maybe climb to the back seat, or there's more than one suspect. We're going to watch him to see if he runs. Uncertain if the CHP can actually see them the way they're deployed. That's probably not really visible, so we're going to try to move just in here. CHP helicopter overhead to see if he's trying to crawl out of that back JT? right door, and maybe into that brush here. You can oh, see there, there he is. There he goes. You could see a person. Uh, trying to, he's, now he's uh, looks like he's wearing a black T-shirt, jeans, and we're, we're trying to see his hands here. Use extreme vision. He does vision. have his hands we'll out, We want to see his JT. hands. He that has his like hands out. It does not That's appear good. as if there's a weapon. However, it looked as if the there car. were multiple people in the vehicle. He got back into couldn't the car. Tell, couldn't tell Philip and, Les uh, Philip and uh, Ellen and uh, Leslie if that was a possible uh, female uh, or a male. It was, he was wearing a black, he or she was wearing a black shirt and had his skull and crossbones on it. Uh, looked like they had dark jeans on. Uh, it didn't like, I didn't really like that posture. There's the driver's door opening up right now. Well, now Again, we're going we, to see if it's here. the same person. See? Because there, JT, it looked like the back door opened and I had seen movement in the front seat. And yeah. clearly that's not a possibility for a person to be in two places at once. I'm not positive, neither can the officers be positive, but what troubling moments to see the person get out of the car and then get back in. Bruce Thomas, if you're still with us, what does that do to officers who are trying to secure this location? Well, that just heightens the sensitivity of the officers, knowing that you probably have more than one person in this vehicle and that they're not willing to surrender right away. You can see some movement in the car through the sunroof, but the officers are going to make sure they have plenty of personnel there, safe the area, flood the area, so if it does turn into a foot bail, they can flood. maintain They're moving visual through the bushes. contact and take them into custody. But yeah. in this case, what you have right now is someone that is not willing to give themselves up. We have okay, someone Bruce, running on. through the bushes right now. Uh, looks to be a male. Uh, mm. Crawled out the window instead of opening the door. 
Now, so we don't know if there's still a person in the car. What we've seen is is that person okay. that appears okay. to be similar to the one that we watched get out of the car. You have officers that are pursuing there. Somebody will still be back at the car, the SUV, to secure that just in case there is somebody in there because they, it does not, we don't know if there was one or two or how many people were in that car. Okay, you know, guys, if you're, if you're with me, the suspect is behind that tree. We saw him run. Mm -hmm. The air, uh, the helicopter overhead advised the officers where he was and what he was doing. They did deploy a canine into that area. There is a canine underneath that tree. We're going to push in, Jamie. They are making contact with the suspect. Unless he hopped that wall, which is, remains to be seen, it appears that they're making contact with the suspect right now with the canine. He is being taken into custody. We're being told underneath that tree, so we will see him come out here shortly. Can, and uncertain if the canine actually made contact with the suspect or not, but they had that dog out of the car immediately. He tried doing the okie doke, right? So he tried crawling out that back window again. You can be assured right now that officers, a, a clearance team is clearing the car right now. Yeah, that's a good angle right there, Jason. As we continue in, you can see the suspect right up against that wall. We're going to use extreme vision to show you him being taken into custody. It does not appear he or she, uh, it is a male wearing that black t-shirt hold right here, Jason. This is good. Blue jeans. They're searching him for weapons. He seems to be erratic, mm -hmm. but he tried doing the old okie dokie, getting out that right rear door where the officers couldn't see him, but you can be rested. You can rest assured that air, that air uh, asset, the helicopter, saw him get out that window, saw him crawl, and saw him run. He was he was doing the old scoot across the ground, trying to get through that brush and try to get in the clear. But that didn't that didn't work out. Obviously, watch your exposure, Jamie, as they take him into custody here and walking him back to the car. CHP has cleared the car, or is in the process of clearing the car to make sure there's no additional suspects in it. Yeah, do we know that? Do we know that information yet? If there's anybody in that car? Well, the, we're gonna as soon as we're gonna walk him back here. We're gonna maybe move back to where we were, Jason. We're gonna see if that car has been cleared. We we'll can tell by the pull out a little bit, Jamie. We can see that car off to the left there. Yeah, they're standing around that car. They're not in a tactical stand, so more than likely that car has been cleared. So that was that one suspect, Philip, just jumping around in that car. Maybe he couldn't get out of that driver's door because it was uh, it was up against that dirt and that.